So I've been watching the forums, and a lot of people lately have been saying that in the Ender 3, in the new versions, you can actually save your e-steps right on the control panel. So I looked into this, and I found out that's true. I'm gonna walk you through that. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So today we're actually gonna walk through how to save your e-steps on the newer versions of the Ender 3. This does not cover all the versions, and I'm gonna leave the other videos out there. You'll need to go to the other videos to get the calculations to learn how to calculate your e-steps, and then use this video on how to directly input them into the Ender 3. This is really a great feature, and if your Ender 3 has it, this is how I'm going to suggest to do it going forward. Like I said, check out the other videos. They'll be linked below on how to calculate your e-steps and your flow rate. And then this video will show you how to enter them straight into the control panel and it saves to the EEPROM. Let's do it. So if you click the button, you scroll down to control, you click control and you scroll down to motion and you scroll all the way down. Now all this stuff was not in my first Ender 3's firmware. You could not see this on the screen. Um, there's Excel and Jerk and VMAX and everything. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom though, there's a line called E-Steps. You can see from the factory we know they come at 93. You can actually click on that and we can change it. So say I want it to be 100. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll that up to be 100 and click OK. So now we see the E-steps is at 100.2. So if I go back in the firmware to control and I go to store memory and I click it, it flashes and it's OK. Now if I go back to the main page and back to the info screen, we're here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna shut off the, the 3D printer, and I'm gonna pull the power plug. So the power plug's here. I've pulled the power plug, and we're gonna let it sit for about 20 seconds just to make sure. Now I've tested this a couple times, and I was really astounded to find out that it's saving the new E-steps. So I'm gonna take this power plug and go ahead and plug it back in, and then go ahead and turn on the Ender 3 so it fires back up. And we're gonna go ahead and check that. So hit the button, go to control, go to motion, and scroll all the way down. Now our E-steps right now is at 100.2, okay? So if I change this, and we're gonna make it back down to 93. And we'll hit enter. Now I'm gonna go back a little bit just to prove out this point. Hit control. And I'm not gonna hit store memory this time, I'm actually gonna hit load memory. And that'll bring back anything that was already previously in the memory. We know we just changed this to 93 steps again. So go ahead and click load memory. Go up to motion. Scroll all the way down and look, 100.2 e-steps. It remembered. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I think this is a much easier way to store your e-steps in the newer Ender 3s. Uh, the older ones did not have this, but the newer ones, it looks like you can do it right from the firmware. So there you have it. You've saved your e-steps into the EEPROM and you're good to go. You don't have to go through Octoprint and you don't have to put the settings in Cura or your slicer like we said before. This is really a great feature and again, if your Ender 3 has this, it's the way to go. You guys have a great day and keep printing. Hey everybody, if you like the video, hit the like button below, click the subscribe button if you wanna see more, and if you wanna be notified when the next great videos come out, click that little bell over there. Thank you so much for watching. Keep mashing that subscribe button. We're almost to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm doing a big giveaway.